Today, I'm gonna to show you how to create stars in Photoshop. Hey guys, and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace, and you can find me on flurn.com, where we make learning Photoshop and photography fun. And today's episode is so cool. It's gonna help you out whether you got a picture of your friends and it's a nice night and there are no stars in the background, or if you're a landscape photographer and you've got a beautiful landscape, the only thing missing is stars. We're gonna show you this very simple technique on how you can create stars in Photoshop. The best thing about this technique is it's gonna work on any image, no matter how big it is. In fact, in today's episode, we're working on a giant panorama. We're gonna start off by creating a custom brush in Photoshop. We're gonna show you every option you need to make this brush look exactly like stars. And to make the stars look even more realistic, I'm gonna show you how to add a glow to the stars and how to give them a little bit of a blur to look like they're trailing across the sky. And best of all, this brush is available for download at flurn.com. All right guys, let's jump into Photoshop. So here's our panorama image for today. It's a beautiful panorama of New York. We can see that it's like, it's a gorgeous, gorgeous image. It's just missing a few stars. So that's what we're going to be doing today. We're gonna to be adding these stars. Now, I'm gonna create a new layer here and basically the idea, what we wanna do is go in and add a bunch of individual white little dots. I mean, it's, you know, for the most part, that's what a star looks like. It's just a little <laughs> tiny white dot. So if you were trying to do this like on your own and you didn't know how to use a custom brush, maybe you would like hit B for the brush tool and change your color to white and then make like a really, really, you know, like small, small, let's just kind of make this a lot smaller here. I'm on a new layer. And then you'd like click once and then click again and then, you know, just go around and click basically a whole bunch of times to try to create some stars on your image. Now. There's a couple problems with this. One, it's gonna take forever. And two, all the stars are going to look the exact same. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a custom brush shape that looks like a couple of stars. They're gonna be different sizes, and then we're gonna go in and add some different options to make it scatter around. So instead of having to click each single time you wanna make a star, we're gonna show you how to create an entire night sky with just a couple of brush strokes. All right, so let's create that custom brush. To start off, I'm gonna hit Control or Command N for a new document. Now our size here, we're gonna have it be 500 by 500 pixels. Usually that's a good size for a custom brush. You want it to be a large brush, so if you need to have it large, you can. You can always scale it down and it won't lose any of its detail. All right, let's hit OK there. And now here on my 500 by 500 pixel brush, we're just going to start with our black. We're gonna paint black. So a brush, whenever you're creating a custom brush, you always want the background to be white and then whatever the brush shape, you want that to be black. All right, so let's create a brush. I'm gonna hit B for the brush tool. We're gonna paint black. I'm gonna right click over here. We're gonna bring our hardness up right about 60, anywhere between 60 and 70 is pretty good. All right, and then I'm gonna paint this black dot right there in the bottom left corner. Okay, so that's one of our, that'll be our larger star. All right, let's make our brush size a little bit smaller. And there we go, that's our smaller star. Now, the reason I'm doing this, I'm spacing these really far apart because stars are like, you know, they're, they're totally random, right? If you have a bunch of stars that are really close together and within Photoshop, it's going to try to like place them really close together. But if you make your brush shape like with two stars really far apart, then it's gonna look like totally random and it's not, it's not gonna look like it's done in Photoshop at all. So this is why we're spacing them super far apart. All right, and that's it for the brush shape. So just go to edit and down to define brush preset. All right, so we'll just call this Flurn star one and hit okay. All right, now back to our other document here. We're gonna zoom out. I'm gonna hit B for the brush tool. We're gonna right click. There we go, right in our document. Okay, and we're gonna go all the way down to our latest brush. And if I hover over it, you're gonna see it says Flurn star one. So let's go ahead and click there. Now, if I start painting, we're gonna make a new layer here. If I start painting with white, you're gonna see that this is what it looks like right now. It's basically, we can see our small dot up on the top right and our large dot up on the bottom left there. And it's just doing that a bunch of different times. All right, so we have our, our custom brush is working 
but the settings that we want aren't there yet, right? This doesn't, this is not realistic. If you did this around the sky, it's, that, that doesn't look realistic. So now it's time to add our brush settings to make it look perfect. So to get to our brush settings, we're gonna go to window and down to brush. All right, and that's gonna give us basically all of these options when we're creating our own custom brush. And I'm gonna go ahead and pull this out right over there. All right, now we're gonna see a little preview here on the bottom of what our brush is gonna look like. So as I paint around, we can see that's what our preview looks like. All right, now the first thing that I wanna click on is our shape dynamics. So we're gonna click that on and we're gonna bring our size jitter all the way to 100. This is gonna make some of those brushes larger and some of them smaller. All right, and you can see already it's getting very random. We still have all of our top, the little dots are still at the top and the big dots are at the bottom, but it is changing the size. Every time it lays down a, a brush, it's going to change the size. So we're looking pretty good now. Next thing I wanna do is bring up our angle jitter. We're gonna bring this all the way up. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna start rotating these around. So each time I put one of these stars, basically each time I paint around, and I'm just, I'm clicking and holding. Now I'm using a pressure sensitive tablet, but if I use my mouse, it, this actually doesn't matter. I can still have a lot of success just by using a trackpad on my mouse. It's because we have, in the brush shape, we have one small dot and one larger dot. And I'm telling those to like rotate with each time it actually places that down and change size. So that's how we're able to see a ton of variation within there. Now that's probably gonna be good enough. If you want these to be a little bit farther apart, you can definitely do that. And that's called scattering. So with scattering, you can have these scatter farther and farther apart. So as I paint around here, you're gonna see, let's turn on both axes here. It'll go on the Y and the X axis. And as I paint around there, you can see instead of being so localized, they're just really going everywhere now. All right, and the coolest part about this is it's so random, it just, it really doesn't look as though it was done in Photoshop. All right, now if you wanna create a ton of stars, I recommend bringing your count up a couple stops. And there we go, we're gonna be painting a lot of stars with a very small brush stroke. So for now, I'm gonna leave that down to zero, but if you're, if you're a star crazy person, bring your count up, and it's gonna create a lot of stars. All right, there we go. The next thing we're gonna click on are the Let's see, here we wanna click on our transfer. There we go. With our transfer, we're gonna turn on the opacity jitter. This is going to allow some of the stars to be more visible and some of the stars to be less visible, which is how it would normally be, right? You don't want them to all be 100%. Some of these stars are gonna basically be further away from, uh, from Earth, so they're not gonna be as visible. All right, cool, that's looking pretty good, actually. We're looking like our, our stars are definitely looking pretty realistic at this point. Now, if you want to do a couple of things, like uh, we'll go back to our brush tip shape. If you wanna bring, let's say you're putting down too many stars, you want these to be further spaced apart, you can always bring up your spacing and that's going to allow you to do, you can see as I paint around here, it's gonna put a lot less down. So the farther you're spacing up, there we go, it's going to just space these out and then you bring that down and it's gonna put a lot more stars in there at the same time. So find a place that you're pretty comfortable with. Obviously, like, <laughs> I'm not even touching it, it's going right now. So you wanna find somewhere, I'm gonna put it around 10%. There we go, let's just hit all and then hit delete. And that looks really good. All right, now we're gonna save this brush out because I like it, it it's, totally works for this image. So here in our brush menu, we're gonna go to the menu right up here at the top and I'm gonna go to new brush preset and I'm just gonna call this Flern Star Final. There we go. And it's going to capture the brush size in the preset. So everything that, all these settings that we just had on there, these are all going to be stored within this brush. And this is what's available for down, <laughs> I was gonna say purchase, but it's free. So it's gonna be available for download on flern.com to this very episode. Just click in the episode description right down below for a link on the, it'll take you to Flurn, and then it's gonna be a nice big button where you can download this brush. All right, let's hit okay there. Cool, so that brush is saved. We're ready to close out this menu, and we're ready to start painting here in Photoshop. So I'm just gonna start here on the left side, and again, I'm on, I'm on a new layer. There we go, we're gonna start painting over there, zoom out a little bit, and start painting right over there. Now I chose a, a panorama, so it's gonna give us a lot of night sky here, just a lot of, really nice options. 
And that looks great. Now, if you want to make your brush larger, let's create another layer here. If you want to make your brush even larger, there we go. Let's try bringing it up. Here we go, a little bit more. What that's going to do is it's going to make larger stars in your sky. So you're going to see at a point like this, like that doesn't look real. That's starting to look like snow. So we definitely don't want that. So that brush is too large. Let's make our size a little bit smaller. All right, that looks pretty good. You know what, that's still too large. You wanna make sure you find the right size. All right, and let's go really small now, and we can add a whole bunch of background stars as well, these things that are gonna be really far away. All right, cool. Now once you're at a point where you're like, yeah, I'm pretty happy with this, this looks good. Let's go ahead and merge all of our star layers together. So I'm gonna shift click those, hit and hit command E to merge those together. Now, the next trick, we don't want these stars to show up like over top of the river and other areas in there. So we're gonna click on our layer mask tool. Now I'm gonna choose a regular brush. We don't want the star brush at this point. We want a regular soft brush. And we're just gonna paint black on our layer mask over top of the buildings. There we go. And the water and anywhere it's very obvious that stars should not show up. So it's okay to put stars everywhere when you first create your brush because that randomness is gonna be really nice. That randomness is what makes it look a lot more realistic. And then with that randomness, it's gonna be pretty likely that some of those stars are gonna like go over top of your background and things like that. So you just wanna make sure to, there we go and maybe fade them out towards the horizon and kind of fade them in different places. All right, looking good. We're ready for our next step, which is gonna be adding a glow to the stars. Cool, all right guys, we're ready to add this glow to our stars. So I'm gonna zoom in a couple times here. We've got our stars, everything looks great. Now, we're gonna click on our layer where we have the stars. I'm gonna go down to FX where it says layer effects and we're gonna to go to blending options. You can also just double click on your layer right over here. That'll do the same thing. Okay, now here in our blending options, I'm gonna click where it says outer glow. We're gonna click on our outer glow and let's go into our settings now. Now our blend mode, we wanna be screen. That looks good. Our color, this is going to depend on your image. Sometimes you have a really warm image and you wanna give it like a nice orange glow. In this case, we have kind of a cool image. So I'm gonna give it a nice cool blue glow. All right, so for our color, we're gonna use our eyedropper here, and I'm actually going to choose a color. There we go. There, all right. It's not allowing me to choose a color because I'm on, I'm on my layer mask here. Let's hit cancel there. All right, I'm gonna click on my layer, and this should allow me to choose a color here. All right, outer layer, we're gonna go, go to outer glow, and here in our color, there we go. A layer is only black and white, so it's not gonna allow you to choose a color. So I'm gonna choose a nice bright color here that's actually in my image. Okay, our outer glow, we're gonna bring our opacity up. There we go, let's hit okay there. Opacity up so we can see that. And we can play around with our size as well. So we're gonna have, basically bring our size up a little bit, which is gonna give a nice glow to those stars. So let's turn this off and on. We can turn our outer glow off and on. And if we're like, yeah, that looks good, or you know what, in this case, I think it's a little too much. So we'll just double click right here where it says outer glow. I'm gonna bring my size down a little bit, okay? And we're gonna bring our opacity down a little bit as well. The glow looks good, it was just a little bit too much. All right, cool, so let's turn that off and on and see, yeah, that's looking pretty good. Now, the next thing we're going to do is add a little bit of a blur to the stars. And this is gonna help them look like they're streaking across the sky a little bit. And as of now, the stars are a little bit too in focus. They don't look as real as they should. So we're gonna add a little blur and it's gonna really make them blend into the image. So click on your layer here. We're gonna go to filter, down to blur, and I'm gonna go to a motion blur. We're gonna add just a little bit of motion across the sky here. You can choose what angle you'd like. That looks good. And your distance, you want this to be really low. I'm gonna like one, two, three is totally good. Let's see, yeah, there we go at, at four, that looks pretty good. So it's not an incredible difference, it just keeps them from being so sharp and like perfect little dots. Those things tend to look like real fake, like they were done in Photoshop, but a little bit of a blur, especially with some movement, can make them look a lot more real. All right, so we're gonna hit okay there, 
All right, and there we have the before and after. Let me just zoom in so you can kind of see. There's our, here we go. There's our before here. So it's just perfect little dots. And the after, you can see they just a look, they look a little bit more like stars. All right, that looks good. Now, when I'm zip this zoomed in, the stars do look a little bit big. So if I wanted to just redo this, it's not a problem at all. I'm gonna create a new layer. We're gonna click on our star brush. Let's go ahead and turn that off visible, invisible there. And then with just, all I have to do is make my brush size a little bit smaller. All right. There we go. A little bit smaller. And we're gonna go to window and down to brush. And I'm gonna go ahead and scatter these out a little bit more. All right, so you can see how easy, how easy it is to just totally redo that. All right, that looks, yeah, that's the size that we want there. All right, cool. So then we just paint a whole new set of stars on our image and it, all I'm doing right now is just clicking and painting, there we go. Just clicking and dragging around my image. So if you don't get it right the first go around, it's really not a big deal, just continue Click and drag around and you're good to go. All right guys, that's all there is to it. Let's take a look at our before and our after. Here's our before image, no stars in the sky, and here's our after, a beautiful starry night. Just follow these key steps to make stars in Photoshop. First, you wanna create a custom brush. I recommend creating your size at 500 by 500 pixels. Then you wanna create a little dot in one corner and a bigger dot in another corner. This is gonna allow you some variability when it comes to the stars. Now it's time to make this brush actually look like stars. Go from window down to brush. Here you can change things like scattering and shape dynamics that are gonna change your brush tip shape to scatter around and actually look like stars. As a bonus, try adding an outer glow to your stars. You can either choose a cool glow or a warm glow. Go ahead and play with your settings to get the most realistic effect. And to finish it off, we're adding a little bit of a motion blur. It's gonna help the stars look like they're actually moving across the sky, and it's gonna make them look a lot more realistic and less like they were just done in Photoshop. All right, guys, and that's it for today's episode. Thanks so much for watching Flurn. If you're a big lazy bones, you can head over to flurn.com and download this very star brush, or you can make it yourself. You've got the power to do it now. If you love Photoshop like I do, you're gonna wanna subscribe to our YouTube channel. Just click on your screen right now, there's a big old red button. We'll send you free Photoshop and photography episodes every single week. And if you have a question about today's episode, or you just wanted to be like, whoa, that, that, stars are so fun, I'm a starologist. Uh, that's not real. Anyway, leave it in a comment down below. I'd love, from, I'd love to hear from all you starologists out there. Thanks so much, guys. I'll flirt you later. Bye, everyone. Um, yeah, actually, starologist is a real thing. At a blur, and they're going to look toady, toady. <laughs> they're going to look toady. My computer screen is so dirty right now that I actually can't even see where there are stars. Yeah, actually, starologists are real, okay? They study s starology. We're just going to spit shine my computer screen here so I can see uh, if I'm actually making stars or not because there's a bunch of crap all over the screen. <laughs> I can't even tell what I'm doing. The movement of the stars dictates uh, how you're gonna feel that day. Make sure to keep your screen very clean uh, when you're creating stars. Someone on the roof right now, walking around in the middle of my star episode. The heck? You can either choose a warm glow or a cool glow. And then you wanna la 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 la. You don't wanna mix up where your cousin Jeffrey came to your house and sneezed all over your computer for a star. There we go, nice and clean. Little bonus for today's episode.